Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord, our God. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us turn unto the altar of God and make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and no one will announce, look, here it is, or there it is, for behold, the kingdom of God is among you. For, for he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be, be without end. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, 
only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also you. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, establish us in your love and guide us in your grace so that we may ever desire to do your holy will. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O merciful Father, we offer prayers this day for the repose of the soul of our sister in blessed memory, Rosaline Shadokovsky, and pray that she might enter eternal rest. And we ask for your grace and blessing to rest upon her, Accept her in your eternal kingdom and bring us the consolation of always putting our trust in your care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity, with the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we take the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on the high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make a withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. The just man shall flourish like a palm tree, shall grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they shall nourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit even in old age always vigorous and sturdy, as they proclaim, the Lord is just, our rock, in whom there is no wrong. The second reading for today is taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore we aspire to please Him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alas, Lord God, they say to me, is not this the one who is forever spinning parables? Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, 
that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear, and when the grain is ripe, he wills the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky may dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Then how can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? These words are taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I would like to talk today about the kingdom of God, and I would like to talk about faith. We read in Paul's letter to the Hebrews that faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things that are not seen. Faith can be defined as a belief, confidence, or assurance that one has in a person or a thing. During Jesus' three-year ministry, Jesus uses the word faith and belief interchangeably. When Jesus appeared to Thomas following his resurrection, he said to him, be not unbelieving, but believing. You know, in our world, in our society, it can be said that for one to have faith, one must have evidence. Though we were not present when Jesus came into the world, we hear of the testimonies of others who bore witness 
to the miracles and to the teachings of Jesus. It is these testimonies that fellow Christians have the assurance and the trust in the Word that was made flesh, which brings about a clear understanding of the kingdom and a deeper faith and a belief in an unseen God. Blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. It is at the close of John Gospel that we read the following. Many other signs therefore Jesus performed in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these have been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing in him you may have life in his name. Jesus reminds us in John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 24, when he said, Unless you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. It can be said that most people have lost and are out of touch with their true self. There are many who believe that God cannot easily be felt or experienced and that truth cannot easily be understood or practiced. But yet there are Christians around the world who have that faith, who have not seen God, but yet they have believed. It can also be said that without faith and belief in God and His Word, an individual goes through life without a compass to point his true path back home and is without a rudder to steer oneself clear of the sea of vain illusions and false conceptions. But yet, throughout the history of the Bible, God revealed himself to those who sought him by faith. It is by faith that one believes that God created the heavens and the earth. It was by faith that Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain. It was by faith that Noah trusted in God's directive to build an ark. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed God and God called him out to go to a strange land where he would receive his inheritance. And it was by faith that Abraham, when tested, was willing to offer up his only son Isaac. And finally, it was by faith that Moses went forth from God's assurance and delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Pharaoh. All these, my brothers and sisters, are examples of God's blessings of one who sought him one who had faith and trust. When we look in the New Testament, we find the word faith is mentioned as a verb 217 times and as a noun 227 times. Time and time again we hear the words of Jesus who said, Your faith has made you whole or by your faith you have been saved. Faith is so powerful that Jesus said that if one had faith the size of a mustard seed, mountains could be moved. In the book of Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6, Paul writes, And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that God is a rewarder of those who truly seek him. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus teaches, He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, 
but he who has disbelief shall be condemned. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, that when you have faith in God, you don't have to worry about your future because you put everything into the hands of the Lord and he tells us to go forth to do your best and have faith. Faith brings about many things. Faith brings about belief. It brings about knowledge and wisdom and it brings about peace. It has been said that the beginning of wisdom begins with faith. The word faith exists in all religions and all faiths, and it is the cornerstone of knowing the Supreme Being in Judaism. We read from Isaiah the prophet, chapter 7, verse 9, who wrote, Unless you have believed, you will not understand. In Christianity, we read from the Gospel of John, and they said to him, Jesus, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them and said, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. In Islam, we read from the Quran, Put your trust on the exalted might, the merciful, who sees you standing forth in prayer, and by your movements among those who prostrate themselves. For it is he who hears and sees all things. In Buddhism, from the Sutta Nipata, we read, By faith shall we be free and you will go beyond the world of death. In Hinduism, from the Rig Veda, we read, Faith is composed of the heart's intention. Light comes through faith, and that a man of faith, absorbed in faith, with his senses controlled, attains knowledge, and with knowledge attained, quickly find supreme peace. But the ignorant man, who is without faith, goes doubting to his own destruction. For the doubting self, there is neither this world, nor the next, nor joy. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, Paul speaks in the book to the Romans, Chapter 10, verse 17. He says, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. As Christians, baptized in this faith, we must seek God daily, and through our faith, we will find Him. Let all of us be assured by these words that are found in the book of Proverbs, that when it comes to faith, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter mysteries from of old. this offering most holy trinity which we make in remembrance of the passion resurrection and ascension of our lord jesus christ and in honor of the blessed virgin mary and all the saints that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation may they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven we ask this through christ our lord amen pray my brothers and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by god our heavenly father Amen. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God, as we offer this sacrifice in your name, speak no longer to us in parables, but make your message plain, that it may guide us to our salvation. Through Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, accept the gifts we offer to you in faith and trust for the repose of the soul of our departed sister, Rosalind Tcharkovsky. May this offering unite us with your son's offering on the cross, which brings unto us eternal life. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right and 
Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his teaching and ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live, giving our lives in service to you and all people. Still built, hearing his word in our world to who day, we strive to follow his example and set our hearts on the world to come. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox in Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar, into the presence of your divine majesty, that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your handmaiden, Rosaline Shatakoski, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleeps in peace. To her soul, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, Grant, we pray, place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, Grant us peace in our day, 
supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and vouchsafe to grant it peace and unity according to your holy will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May I at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now offer a prayer, an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
For we walk by faith, not by sight. The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have fed us with the word of life and the food of salvation. Open our eyes to the eternal mysteries so that we may see the growth of your kingdom within us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us pray. O merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May our sister in blessed memory, Rosaline Shadokoski, who we remember today in prayer, be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifices are offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart him, from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life of the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. and sisters, I welcome you to our church this morning as we offer the Holy Mass of the Eucharist. We will conclude with this morning's service of offering up a prayer. Let us remember in our prayers this day the sick, the suffering and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who are still suffering from the coronavirus, to pray for not only them but also for their families. Let us continue to pray for the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, the healthcare workers, and all who strive daily to save others. In our deepest prayers today, let us pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all those who suffer violence, both here and abroad. 
Let us keep in our prayers this day and pray for all those who serve in our armed forces that God would watch over them, protect them, and bring them safely back to their families. And let us pray for one another, for our families and our loved ones, for those who truly seek help within their lives. And also, let us conclude by offering prayers for all the repose of the souls of our faithful brothers and sisters and today, especially for, for Rosaline Sharkovsky, may God be with all of you. May he continue to bless us with his divine presence and his infinite love. May God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the soul of our late departed sister, Rosalind Sharkovsky, as well as all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 